Okay, we have written an interesting sum. We have the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over three n plus one minus one over three n. Okay, whenever I see something like this, my first thought is maybe it's a telescoping series. So let's just kind of plug in terms and see, starting with n equals one, if we do that, this is gonna become one fourth minus one third. And then plugging a two in, we have one over seven minus one over six. And then plugging three in, we're gonna have one over 10 minus one over nine. And the problem I'm seeing, we could go on and on forever with this, but we're not seeing any cancellation. So this is actually not telescoping and we can't really do it that way. And we're not gonna get any simplification from cancellation. And so what I wanna do instead on this is try to look at this, look at each of these as an integral. So for example, if we create if I created an integral like for this first one, x to the 3n dx, we just integrate that with power rule because that's a constant. So this is going to be x to the 3n plus 1. We created that, but we also created it in the denominator. And what you'll notice about this is if we could evaluate this, when we evaluate it at 0, it's just going to be 0. So it's this upper bound that's going to determine the value of this integral. If we just make that a one, make that a one there, this whole thing is just gonna to evaluate to one over three n plus one. And so this gives us exactly our value right here. And then for the other one, we can do the exact same kind of thing, integrating from zero to one, but this time we just need a different exponent here. So if we do three n minus one, integrating this, this is gonna be x to the three n over three n, evaluated from zero to one. Again, zero is nothing. You plug in one and you get one over three n, which is exactly what we have right here. So what I want to do is replace each of these with these integrals here. And since we've got the same bounds, I can put it under one integral sign because they're both from one to zero. So let's see how that's going to look. And then at this point, I don't want to just integrate this because we know what's going to happen because we just did that. If we integrate this, we're just going to get back this and that's not going to help us at all. But what we can do is if we just swap the integral in the series and the summation on this, then what's gonna happen is then we can treat this inside as a sum and then we can simplify it from there. And now doing it this way, well, actually what I wanna do is I want this as two separate sums so we can evaluate these separately. So let me just rewrite that a little bit. And now at this point, what you might be able to see is that each of these is starting to look like a geometric series where we can write it that way. So let me just try to clean this up a little bit. So for this first one, instead of writing it as x to the 3n, just by exponent properties, I can write it as x cubed to the n. And for this second one, I can break this up. For the minus one, we could write that as one over x. And then this one over x is not dependent on n, so I can bring it up front, up front of the sum and write it like this. But then with the x cubed to the n, I can write it the same way we have this one like this as x cubed to the n. And now at this point, the way we have this and this sum right here, it's really similar to our formula over to the right for the geometric series. There's a couple problems. Our lower bound, our, our starting point here is one, whereas here it's zero. That's gonna be easy to fix. Now we have this condition on the geometric series that we need the absolute value of x to be less than one. That's really gonna be no problem because we have on the integral all of our x values are between zero and one. And when you cube a number between zero and one, it's still between zero and one. So this condition is not a problem. And then for this n equals one, well, in that case, all you need to do is find the first value. So basically all we need to do using the formula is we just input x cubed instead of x. So in the denominator for both these, they're gonna look like one minus x cubed. And then in the numerator, instead of one, we'll need the first term. So you plug a one in, here, and it's just an x cubed. So you're gonna have x cubed in the numerator, and it's gonna be the exact same thing for this one over here. So we can just take this and plug it in here and here, and try to get some more simplification and integrate. Okay, next we plugged in this value and this value from our series that we calculated before. Now, before we integrate, we can do some things. I can um, cancel an x with an x here, so this becomes an x squared, and then we have a common denominator, so let's write it over here. So we have one minus x cubed. And then in the numerator, it's gonna become just x cubed minus x squared. And I think this is an integral we can do. Let me make a little more space and we'll finish this off on the next board. 
Okay, now from here, let's just do some factoring on each of these. So we can factor the numerator and the denominator here. So first, we can look at this denominator as the difference of two cubes. So I can do this as one minus x. I'll kind of change the order when I do this and write this as x squared plus x plus one. And then in the numerator, let's factor out an x squared. So then this becomes x minus one dx. Then I can cancel this with this, but just the sign is reversed. So I need to bring a minus up front when I do that. And then here we could do long division on it, but I always seem to skip it. So what I'm gonna do is if I add an plus x plus one on here, then we're gonna have the whole integral becomes one. I don't wanna change it. So we do minus x minus one. So then we, then we can split this up into two integrals right here where the first one's just gonna be one. And we can clearly see this is all gonna cancel. So I'm gonna do this first integral is just one dx. For the second one, I'll distribute the minus sign into the minus x minus one and write it as a plus. And then this becomes x plus one over x squared plus x plus one dx. And then here on this one, I wanna set up a u substitution. So I'm gonna kind of force this to happen over here. If I multiply them by two, this becomes two x plus two. Well, I can write two as one plus one, because I multiply it in by two, let's multiply a half in front. But let's take this plus one right here and break that off and create a third integral with that. So again, we'll distribute in the one half to it. So we'll have the one half in front, integrate from zero to one. We have this one in the numerator coming over with the same denominator. Then here we can integrate this one. It's just gonna be minus X. I'm gonna evaluate all these together, so let's not evaluate yet. Then here on this one, what you can see is if this is our u, we have our du here in the numerator. So I'm going to just do this on the fly because this is just going to be natural log of the denominator. So we're going to have natural log. I can drop absolute value because this is always going to be positive because this is squared in between 0 and 1. So we'll drop absolute value here. And then on this last integral here, what I'm going to need to do is just complete the square in the denominator. So let's see how that's going to look. We take, if this is a one coefficient here, I can write this as x plus one half squared. If you multiply it out, you get x squared plus x plus a fourth. Well, we have a plus one there. So we want this to be three fourths, but in order to set this up to integrate, I don't really want three fourths there. Let's take this and I'm gonna write it as square root of three over two squared. That's the same thing as three fourths. But then what we have right here, this is exactly in our form for arctan where in our arctan formula, like this right here is gonna be our a value. So what we have is the one half in front. We have one over this a, so we just flip this, and we have two over square root of three, arctan of x plus one half, there's our input. Again, this, again, this one over a value gives two over square root of three, and we're just gonna to need to evaluate all of this from zero to one. Okay, so first let's evaluate at one. We get minus one, plus one half, plug one in here, you have natural log of three. Then on all this stuff, we have one over square root of three, arctan. Now, if you simplify this right here, it's gonna be the same thing as two x plus one. So plugging the one in, you end up with three square root of three here. And then for the next part, minus, you plug a zero in here and that's a zero. You plug a zero in here, you get a natural log of one, that's also a zero. Then plugging the zero in the last part, we have one over square root of three, arctan. You plug a zero in now, you have one over square root of three. That's gonna be the same thing as square root of three over three. Now over here, this might be better written as just square root of three, I think. So I'll write this as a square root of three. And then let's just clean it up a little bit. I'll reorder it. This, I can bring the one half into the exponent here and write this as natural log square root of three minus one. Then for this stuff, let's let's factor out the one over square root of three here and here. Arctan of square root of three, that's gonna be pi over three. And then arctan, arctan of square root of three over three, that's gonna be pi over six. But if I get a common denominator over here, we can write that as two pi over six. So then all this right here is pi over six. So put that all together for my final solution, we have natural log square root of three minus one. Multiplying this in here, we're gonna have plus pi over six square root of three, and that's it. Okay, so it's actually quite a bit of work to do this. I don't really know, off the top of my head, I don't really know a better way. So 
going through the steps, but it's pretty nice to eventually be able to reduce this down to not like a single number, but a pretty clean expression. So anyway, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.